Preseason is over for Newcastle United. Thank fuck for that. Bonjour, everyone. Well, we'll start off negative and we'll try and turn it into a positive. There's some good rumours this morning about who could potentially be coming to the club, but um, final pre game of the season, the Borough 1 against Borough rematch, part two, got cancelled for Monday because we haven't got any fucking players, as we'll get into in a minute when I go through the lineup. But yeah, Stoke beat with 1 0 at St James Park in our final game of pre season, just one week until we travel to London Stadium to play West Ham United. Gonna need plenty more that tonight. CBD Life. Shout them out. They are our partners. Don't even follow on Instagram if you don't do it. The Magpie channel, over 15,000 of them. They sent us out a box last month. Should we get one again soon? Really helps with anxiety, depression. Whenever you just want to chill out a little bit, really helps with loads of stuff. Google the benefits of CBD. Definitely going to need it watching Newcastle this season. Depending on who we're saying, getting to that in a minute. But definitely need it so far after being beaten 1 0 by Stoke. 5-1 by Borough in just the space of a few days. This can chill me out at night. But it's watching these. We're watching some hopefully good players when England take on Iceland. Back in Newcastle though, yeah, pre-season's over. And like I say, thank God. Thank God it is over. Because we don't want that to last any longer, do we? I mean, <laughs> championship struggling teams are just beating them up for fun. Day in, day out now. You know, they're thrashing off Borough. But a comfort win for Stoke looked like the day. I mean, Newcastle, uh, how comfort was it? Again, no stream, no commentary. Newcastle's Twitter page is putting out a few videos now and again, pretty much reduced the long range efforts from St. Maxman and Jacob Murphy. Um, St. Maxman was one on one, that was the last chance I saw. He should have buried that, but he was our main threat as always, as he will be throughout the rest of his time that he is on Tyneside. Jacob Murphy again looked good, looked bright, tried to make things happen, but again, does he have that end product? Not sure. Most of them, like I say, were from outside the box, tipped uh, wide for a corner. Things like that. I mean, I think Carroll had a chance. Fernandez had a chance. Some good heading opportunities that they have put over. But it is what it is. I mean, pre-season, it, it's, it's not all about the results. But it definitely doesn't bode well. I give you much confidence getting beat off these championship teams. Like I say, just a week before the season starts. If we just look at the team that played against Stoke City today. Call Dolo in net. Our new number one. Now that the is injured. DeAndre Redden at right back. Who I kind of believe is still at the club. After the way his season ended for us. You could tell he just didn't want to be here last year. He was making no effort on the pitch, not chasing anyone down. He didn't even want to touch the ball. He was jumping over the ball. He didn't want nothing to do with it. Didn't look like he didn't want to get injured because he was away from the club. He might still go, but I guess the reason he's playing, like I'll touch on a couple of others, Muto off the bench, um, it's because no one's bought him yet. And we need to get rid of so much deadwood, but we need other bodies to replace them and we kind of get rid of them to start with. Fernandez, rock solid Fernandez, centre back, Isaac Hayden. Alongside him, so we might whinge and joke about needing centre backs, not needing them. Why is we signing Rob Holden? Why are we linked with Chris Morton? This is fucking why, because everyone's knackered. Still, still no one's fit. Still made mistakes last season as well. When you think about it, slotting mistakes at the back. The Zoom was awful against Middlesbrough. He was shocking. Um, had fault for pretty much every goal against Borough in that defeat the other day. You've got. Dummett, who was injured again the day after just come back from a long injury. I mean, left back, centre back, he can play, he wasn't there. Fabian Shaw, still no way to be seen. He was, is he on international duty or is he injured? I don't know. Jeff Hendrick was on international duty, he played last night for Ireland. So he didn't make his debut at St James's yet. So we were forced to play Isaac Hayden at centre back. And we're forced to play Manquillo, who, yeah, he's played there as the left back, but let's be honest, he is a right back. He was at left back. Dan Bonasa came into the middle of the park, the young and who. Has been impressing us during pre season. Good ping on him, not sure he got on the day. Like I say, I haven't seen the highlights yet when the club we do release them, but we got beat, so probably not that well. Sean Longstaff in the middle, where he'd been playing more of a number 10 role so far pre season, back in centre mid the day. Jacob Murphy, uh, like I say, who impressed, he was on the right. Almiron in the number 10 role, St. Maxman on the left, with big Andy Carroll up top. So, I mean, the forward line isn't that bad, especially obviously Almiron, Miggy. Almiron and Miggy, two of them now. Uh, we're going to need them both. Can we get it? You know, adopt someone and make it. Almiron and St. Maximin. Carroll up top. Decent enough. Very good front three, that for me, depending on obviously how fit Carroll is and St. and Almiron when they get involved. It's a solid front three, but the rest of the team is fucking shit. It is massively worrying that start on 11. Let's be honest. Dolo, Championship Keeper, Yedlin, not good enough. Fernandez, he's the only other one. Fernandez, solid. Hayden, yeah, but as a centre back. 
Manquillo, he's Ari, but not as a left back. Balassa, Young, Sean, you need to see more of him, hasn't done now since his breakthrough season. Jacob Murphy, again, he was bright, good spark, good energy, but no end product again. Um, I'm here on see my son, so yeah, and then we'll get on the bench. Mark Gillespie, Henry Saive is still alive, he's still here. Henry Saive, fucking hell. Atsu, who's linked with Celtic, I wish they'd just sign him, just give them. Why are we asking for money? Just swap them. Swap them for nothing. Just swap them for 24 cans of iron brew. Nobody cares about Christian Atsu. He came off the bench, so did Yoshinu Rimoto, and so did Joe Linton. J9, the return of J9 out of nowhere. Pictured this week training after being quarantined and his missus apparently being heavily pregnant. Still no real confirmation of the club, just knew that he was back training. Yeah. Um, off the bench today with 20 minutes to go. I was trying to put a bet on him live, actually, from a score. That didn't happen. Because I couldn't even... There was no in-play match betting. So thankfully I saved myself a tonight, eh? Because he probably didn't touch the ball, by the sounds of it. But that team there, like I say, is awful. Absolutely awful. Like I say, we are missing a hell of a lot of players. I mean, we're, we're missing Dubravka, Kraft, Shaw, Lejeune, uh, Matty Longstaff, Hendrick, um, who else? Dwight Gale. I mean, I'm, I've, I've missed a few off there easy as well. So, a full start on them, we're missing really on. So, maybe, you know, 1 0 against Stoke. But, um, like I say, when we play West Ham in a week, it's not great. It doesn't round off a great pre season, really. We got off a couple of near wins early on against their crew, where we beat them, what, 3 0, was it? Then Barnsley edged 2 1, thanks to a penalty at the end from Jacob Murphy. Two defeats in a week, though, against two really shit championship teams that were battling survival that were nearly League One teams now this year. So, not good. Um, but, onto a positive note, because this video has been on seven minutes now. And these are big ifs, but I put the tweet out the day. Ashley and Bruce deserve credit. <laughs> Hold on, hear me out. If these signs go through, it's all over Sky Sports, it's all official, that we've had a bid accepted for Jamal Lewis. Norwich City's well sought after young left-back for £13.5 million, rising to £15 million. If we can get that over the line, didn't want to say that, but it's came out already. Unreal signing. I'll be amazed if we manage to convince him to come up to Newcastle. I really will because Liverpool were after him. The champions of the Premier League were after him. They had a bid rejected earlier in the summer of £20 million. Now, obviously, push comes to shove. Norwich needed that bit of money. Um, they've accepted £15 million from us. Unbelievable signing that. He was classed last season, Jamal Lewis, for them. Yet, yeah, Norwich got a shaky defence, but... He wasn't really part of that. He's an energetic, young left-back who get bombs forward, nips in with a goal. Great. Great saying that for Newcastle if we can get it done. And alongside England international, Callum Wilson. £20 million bid put in the day for Newcastle. Villa came in a little bit later with a £21 million bid. Villa had £15 million rejected yesterday for Callum Wilson. His agent has said that he prefers to move up north. Of course he does. Crying on the halt. Fuck Villa. Yeah. Got loads of bridges, us. Loves it up here. And if we can get Ryan Fraser, which I'll get into in a minute, actually. But Carl Wilson, unreal saying again, I'll be surprised, mainly, I just didn't know what's going on here. I mean, I, I put the joke out. I mean, Ashley thought he was buying John Lewis and House of Fraser, not Jamal Lewis and Ryan Fraser. And I can't believe he's putting £20 million for Callum Wilson. I mean, he's got the £17 million from the Saudis, hasn't he? non depositable But I'm shocked in the current climate. We've heard that Ashley's obviously struggling. Every high street brand's struggling. Um, that's why he's wanting to sell. I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm, I kind of get over paying if we do get Callum Wilson the twenty million pound for him, fifteen million pound for Jamal Lewis. Thirty five million isn't much in this day and age, but it is at the minute with Corona and not many teams are investing apart from Chelsea, we're just buying everyone. Unreal. Um, and Man City as always, but you know a lot of clubs. If you look when Sky do the thing alongside who saying who, it's always a couple of players and a lot of them are frees or loans. So for Newcastle to actually spend money. On a really promising young English left back, in an English straight guy in Callum Wilson, it's unbelievable. I mean, the thing is, that's the worrying thing for me at the minute is that at least it's official. At least we're hearing on Sky that there is bids being put in. The interest is real, but until they yeah, until the the holding up the shit, I, I won't quite believe it. But um, a big if. But if we do sign Lewis, Wilson, Ryan Fraser, who we'll get onto now, who is apparently meant to be. For a medical in tune yesterday. Crunch talks with Brucey over bacon buddies last night. Hopefully Brucey got him pissed enough and he's uh, signed the contract. Medical pending, apparently, for Ryan Fraser. Again, another unreal signing. It was only last year he was linked with Arsenal. 
he, he running his contract down at Bournemouth because he was meant to be linked with the top four toxics club, wasn't he? So it's a min sign in Ryan Fraser. The first time in our history that being close to Scotland has worked out well for us. Being everyone always says, ah, no one wants to join Newcastle. Too far up north, practically Scotland. Everyone wants to just play for a team in London. This time it's actually worked out well because Fraser wants to be near his family in Aberdeen. So right, I say hopefully we can get that one. Signed, sealed, delivered as well because Ryan Fraser, he was top of the assists league um, two seasons ago in the Premier League. So he's a min sign, a lot of threat down the wing. And it, 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 a bit more excitement can come if we're signing these players because if we have Lewis at left back, we have Fraser on the wing, we have Wilson up top. Fraser and Wilson obviously know each other very well from Bournemouth days. Wilson has an eye for goal. Fraser, unbelievable assist record. Them two know each other already, so they'll know the room. We'll kick the ground running with that. And Fraser, Almiron and St. Maximin behind Wilson with the option of Carroll off the bench, Gale. Joe Linton, hopefully kick on, is, is a really decent strike force, to be fair, attacking-wise. Bruce's entertainers, eh? he had to come outside of the top eight, I would say, top six. Which, yeah, on the, on the day, it's a really, really interesting, exciting front line that um, and then obviously the solid sign of Hendrik we're meant to be getting uh, Rogerio Romero some Brazilian left back from Sassuolo I can't say I've ever heard him play but last night everyone's seen his class so that's good yeah the uh, bloke who always tweets out that ah, my memory's gone now like Frazio Romero Frazio some Italian bloke here we go if he tweets it it means it's happened so yeah buzzing if we get him as well because we do I, I can't see we're signing two left backs but apparently we are um, and we do need to because look we've got Manquio a right back at left back today anyways so we do need two left backs it would be great to have that strength and depth you could obviously see the Brazilian being pushed further forward maybe if Richie does go the other way to Bournemouth as well so with these players we're linked with and obviously Rob Holden as well on loan still talks on going with him and Arsenal for that because look at the day Hayden's at centre back it would be an amazing window. It really would be a very, very good window. A solid window for Newcastle United if we can get those over the line. God, I said it again. Bollocks. But yeah, that's chill as well. That's CBD. I feel like I just can't be honest to speak anymore. So let me know what you think of the pre-season for Newcastle overall, especially today and obviously this week's the highlight week, isn't it? The week before the season starts. Two defeats against Championship clubs. Conceding six, scoring one. But it was, let, let's just talk that we get those... Um, signings through the door in the next week before the season starts because we'll be a lot more confident we'll be a lot more optimistic because right now that team in our results it's looking stinky it's looking like a real sticky one for Newcastle this season but a few signs could change everything so let's hope so have a good weekend everyone cheers for watching subscribe to my Pied channel TV and enjoy yourself